Hi. So I'm going to talk about stories. Uh, stories are central to my scholarship and my art practice. I write them, I write about them, and how they're told, and what they do for communities. So I'll start with a story. During the pandemic, news outlets described communities with high rates of COVID infections and deaths as hotspots. San Jose, California, the central research site of my current book project, was one of these hotspots. When the pandemic response shifted to lockdown, I was making plans to spend three months uh, in San Jose conducting interviews and making theater with Teatro Alebrijes, a queer Latinx theater company uh, that is based in San Jose. Instead, I quarantined in Massachusetts and spent most of 2020 on Zoom like many of you. Uh, Teatro Alebrijes also spent the year on Zoom holding what began as digital rehearsal sessions for a Zoom piece of theater. Um, but these, qu these sessions quickly devolved, evolved into uh, weekly survival check-ins mm -hmm. where ensemble members were able to get the support and resources that they needed to survive. On July 9th, 2020, I joined a Zoom call. And as the members joined one by one, people were offered the opportunity to check in um, and to tell the group uh, where they were with their physical health, with their mental health, um, and they were able to ask for support if they needed it. One of the last members to join the call was not feeling well. Mm -hmm. She reported to the group that she had a fever. COVID tests were not readily available at this point, and no one was able to say for sure what was going on, but she had a feeling. Um, so the attention in the Zoom room turned to her. She was visibly sweating through her sheets. The room went silent and then someone cracked a joke. The room paused until the member who wasn't feeling well started to laugh. Then the rest of the room laughed with her. Um, other members of the ensemble asked her if she needed anything and her reply had st has stayed with me. She said, what I need now is laughter, joy to take my mind off this fever. And everyone responded with jokes. The room's objective was very clear at this moment. We needed to make her laugh, and we needed to let her feel that sonic resonance that even momentarily told her brain and her body that things were okay. As a performance studies scholar and a theater historian, I'm fascinated by laughter. Uh, if I were giving a more extended version of this talk, I would frame this story in conversation with the work of various humor studies scholars um, and theoretical frameworks uh, by philosophers from Mexico and Russia, but we can dive more deeply into the nerdier bits of what I do uh, once the Q&A is over. Instead, I want to pivot back to laughter and Teatro Alebrijes to introduce you to five ensemble members and share excerpts of interviews that highlight how my interlocutors understand the role of laughter in the rehearsal room and in their lives. Resident playwright Ugo Badu describes the rehearsal process as a very disciplined process with lots of focus. However, he tells me, if we get it wrong, we're not going to judge. It's fine to get it wrong. Nothing will happen. It makes us stronger. Badu describes laughter as a metric used to measure how much trust is in the room. Ensemble member Sergio Davila describes laughter as a rupture. Davila understands this rupture as an integral part of the, re of the rehearsal process and frames laughter as an intervention, uh, and a mo uh, an intervention for moments of tension. Davila talked about laughter as a force that allows the group to be vulnerable and share the same experience. He says, sometimes when you're nervous or tense, laughter breaks that tension. Laughter breaks any situation, any other emotion that you're feeling or having, it breaks it, so it puts me at ease. Davila further describes this rupture as one that happens between the performer and their ego. These ruptures, as Davila describes them, are integral parts of the process for building an ensemble where members can detach themselves from their individual pressures and anxieties that they carry with them into the space um, so that they can create this ensemble, which Davila describes as an octopus with only one brain and many tentacles. He says, we are all part of one thing. In my interview with Janvier Berber, the Alebrijes production manager, he told me, I've been serious my whole life. However, through his work with Teatro Alebrijes, he also notes that he's been learning how to take back his enjoyment and learn to be a kid again. Berber told me that 
acknowledging laughter in the rehearsal is central to maintaining a relaxed atmosphere. And this is the kind of atmosphere that allows him to focus on the work that he does for the ensemble. Sounding ensemble member Carolina Perez describes laughter as an Advil for your sorrows. You allow yourself to be silly and stupid, and I feel like that's a superpower, she says. You can feel vulnerable, uh, but you know you're in a safe place. For Perez, laughter signaled a site of safety, and if you hear laughter in the rehearsal room, as Badu noted earlier, you can gauge the level of trust in that room. Ensemble member Oliver Alvarez's relationship to laughter is something that's shaped by their understanding of their body as a site of excess. My family told me that that's not how I should laugh. I laughed very femininely, Alvarez recounts, and apparently I wasn't supposed to do that. So all of my childhood and adolescence, I pretty much avoided laughing and all that stuff. I think it affected how I grew up a lot. For Alvarez, Alebrije's rehearsals are a place to reorient and reconnect with their non-binary body and honor the feminine energy alive in their laughter. I think it's essential to understand how quotidian phenomena like laughter shapes communities. Over the past 10 years, Teatro Alebrijes has used laughter to organize rehearsal rooms and craft plays for their audience. It's also a strategy for survival deployed by a community to reaffirm that there is a safe place for them to experience the joy of the present and cultivate hope for the future in a world where they are constantly navigating structural violence that would deny them both of these things. Thank you.